we have empowering collaborative chip design, leveraging generative AI for custom accelerators and edge AI innovation. Mohamed Assem, CTO and co-founder of eFabulous. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thanks for inviting me here to uh, present. Um, I'm actually going to piggyback on some of the things that are uh, mentioned by Vijay earlier because they're uh, very relevant um, uh, to our conversation here. So I'm going to uh, talk about uh, this presentation. It's going to be slightly off the topic of the workshop uh, being uh, LLMs at, at the edge, but it will be uh, relevant in terms of paving the path for more of that. So um, I'm going to start by saying this the, about the need, about the market. So right now, as uh, it was mentioned, the number of devices that are going to be around us is going to be so ubiquitous, so large that everything is going to be connected. And uh, obviously, there are uh, ups and downs related to that in terms of security otherwise. And these are all problems that need to be actually solved uh, as a part of this uh, endeavor. So we need actually customization of chips. And uh, although we do have a lot of um, existence in the market to standard chips that are capable of doing these things. And, uh, but uh, what's happening here and that, you know, there are so many, many applications that are going to be driven fundamentally by the right size uh, computing power. And this is a very important piece here is that uh, once you, tar you have this large number of devices, you want them to live for a long time. Uh, if they're battery operated or uh, some har energy harvesting component to it, you want to actually be able to see it. Um, uh, you want to be having the right power and the right size in terms of resources that you need. So now their challenge always comes as the the problem of customization. And when people, when they think about custom ASIC to start with, it just it doesn't make. Um, it just starts at millions of dollars. Uh, or hundreds of million dollars at, you know, as uh, it was shown earlier. Uh, so if I look at this graph here showing kind of a different types of products when, a, when, a, when sales volume, or, and if you think that this is the, the, the cost, the red line here is the cost of the uh, development for, uh, of an ASIC or a customization, customized solution at, uh, that would look like this, then only uh, large volume products Will actually be just you know making make sense in terms of justification for NRE and making the chips uh, uh, develop get developed and this is actually something that we see all around us. So um, think about you know the the, the phone smartphone volumes and what you know the car volumes, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But there are so many other applications that are going to be um, needing that. So there is a need for taking this down into something uh, to more more accessible to these applications think about it in a world that looks like uh, it is actually possible for the uh, these uh, products uh, thing have the 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 brush to paint so now the brush was so expensive in the previous year and people and the creative designs and solutions are coming only on the left side now by you doing that you get uh, uh, as if you give the the, the paint brush to uh, many, many more people to uh, design and come up with with new solutions. So the key part is that again, it's going to be right size computing cost, uh, power and cost. So and the cost, you know, is a component. And it depends on what. Uh, if you think about it from the um, uh, chip level, is, is 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 something that is very tightly optimized, and usually we do do that. Uh, if you think about it from a product perspective, it's not. Uh, as it's critical, but the uh, amount of semiconductor uh, bomb as a part of a product, it can be modulated without actually um, um, impacting things uh, on the on the price so much. But it, it is actually possible to hit that. So the summary is that we, as we as we go in the semiconductor industry, is the the nodes have become more advanced for good reasons, being driven you know by, to get more features, less power. High, you know, or on higher performance, um, as well as cost for high volume, and the the basically the the cost goes high. This is just a, a rough rough representation of that, and then the number of users or, or innovators or people that are capable of actually applying or using that paintbrush that I mentioned earlier is going down, and that means uh, the the you know as mu as much as I can say about. Uh, innovation within the big companies. I used to work at Texas Instruments, but now we're 
when we do this, uh, 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 in, you have a lot of uh, uh, volume justification to your development. So a lot of innovative designers within the company. So so um, so many other companies have the same. But again, it, the, the 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 world is not accessing the capability uh, to design um, with outside the, the the large capital companies. So we have the 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 typical problem you'll hear it a lot in the US specifically is about the workforce development. We don't have enough designers and the cost is too much and it takes too long. So when I come back to the to the title of the talk, I will just start using, you know, repeat that and use highlight everyone, every part of that uh, title separately and go um, dive it or cover it a little bit. So collaborative chip design and and that is actually uh uh uh, an important point because collaboration uh, relieves a lot of uh, the uh, the need for someone to know everything. So you can have, if you create a medium where people can collaborate uh, on different skill sets and different uh, regions, etc., then you can actually have the, the complete skill set to develop some. So if we simplify the process of chip creation, by doing something like what the was done in the app stores and the app stores everybody mentions them and but i but it, but it is not uh, it's rarely mentioned what really happened so what happened there is before the app stores if you if you want to sell a piece of software uh, you need to build a product and find a customer and build an entity basically and what happened with the app stores is that they provided a, um, a platform to starting point, the business process and the quality standards. Because of that, millions of people are able to do that. And that is the, the key. So we just have to do that uh, in, in the semiconductor space, piece of cake. No. So one of the things we, uh, we, we did and <clears throat> we continue to do is to provide an infrastructure that starts as a, as a baseline. And this is, a, for example, is a is a chip that is uh, based on a uh, an Infineon process. It's a one thirty nanometer, Sky one thirty, and it is a original and, and it is um, ready to go for someone to use it and customize what's in it here. So this way, I don't have to start from scratch. Um, I don't have to know everything about the chip, uh, and also it's going to be sort of shorter cycle time. And I we can talk about that a little more. This is an open source chip available. Um, in more than you know, six hundred tape outs already uh, uh, on around the different open source repositories. So we, you know, having the different flavors of it just makes it you know easy. So it becomes like a standard. Call it like a base of the SDK. Um, we also, you know, by putting you know a lot of emphasis on open source, and I think this is open source EDA and open source design. So in the open source EDA, there. Uh, it, 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 it was important to open the funnel and it is actually uh, a, a big deal in, in a, and it goes in tandem in my opinion with the uh, the, the proprietary EDA frameworks because they do, they serve different purposes and all both of them are justified there's no competition I believe and that's my you know, honest opinion about it and they so provide the tools we provide a chip to start from and then now one of the things that it was mentioned also in the previous presentation about open lane, when we built open lane, it was a, a critical uh, assumption to make that it um, it is not it, it's it acts as a compiler. So the people we worked with uh, back then, uh, they uh, from our uh, the, the sponsor back then was Google when we started the development. The they were on the software side, and we they basically said let's uh, get to the uh, the finished outcome make that a priority higher than actually optimizing the outcome if you think about it this way this is against the dna for actually semiconductor designers in general you can open that to a lot more people so a lot more people can actually get to the gds so having this process call it as the icdk or asic design kit or whatever you know it's a it's an infrastructure that's available and this is available open source and there is a, a multiple ways for manufacturing and it's an, um, in in a in a low cost the community collaboration uh, people have done using this kind of a approach. They have collaborated across the globe um, and end up with something, the chip uh, that 
they would otherwise not have the you know the digital people in Europe, for example. They they needed a analog uh, designer from the U.S. with analog IP. Anyway, so it was actually a, a very interesting uh, uh, outcome to see how that. And then you can see actually that when people have access to such a platform and they start designing and publishing, and you know, this is Twitter feed basically. Uh, showing what you know, how people share, and that's just the the a top of the ice the iceberg, tip of the iceberg. Now, um, and uh, as I said, people share and 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 um, and uh, uh, based for collaboration, for learning, for feedback. The uh, the we had a program with Google where when we uh, Google funded the manufacturing, we just saw that. The, the only thing that the only trend that's happening is that people are adopting that approach and building more designs, more designs. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, 600, 600 t uh, tip outs now, this is a little um, uh, older number, but the, 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 the community is increasing and, uh, and able to do uh, certain, to, to do uh, more customization. One of the, this is one community outcome that was very interesting is that uh, one of our partners, they basically took the, the, the big chip and divided it into 100 ways and created this tiny tip out there. And then that tiny tip out, you can get it 1,000 gates, 2,000 gates in the increment of 10,000 uh, gates. And you can buy it uh, with Apple Pay or a credit card. Uh, it, it's very interesting to actually make it so low cost. And people do things with it. If you go to tinytipout.com, you'll be able to see what people do with it. And I'm just gonna fly through these. This is the community doing many designs in different ways. And they, even the commercial uh, the customers, our customers actually use this approach as well as a platform. So uh, the community growth uh, is exponentially uh, collaborative. So now the more the, 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 the network effect starts to kick in over time and, uh, and it becomes really uh, productive. The next thing is the generative AI aspect of this. So I'm just gonna, say everything that we said in a previous uh, segment, it will just stick on it an LLM or AI with different approach, different hooks, different pieces of the design, different steps of the design. Um, and so that's an example of open lane. The open road team is actually working on some of these things uh, uh, to uh, within the open road. Open lane is, op is, is actually um, uses the open road uh, tool set inside it. Um, and then you can imagine the same picture with uh, some uh, AI attached to it. One of the things we did is that you kind of, you know, as you move to that, you're moving to code more, code more. And and as far as hardware design is concerned, if you, for example, if you're working with Python, HDL, you'll be able to actually have a code design much more smoothly. Now, there is an issue with the uh, generative AI in general is that you need the, 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 the data sets and the data sets are uh, either uh, captive or uh, not so much of a high quality. So one of the things we did is that uh, we ran, we just said, we don't know enough so about it. So how about we just provide what we can provide to so put the silicon out and we ran a ch three challenges and our fourth is actually running now. Um, the, the, every challenge had uh, three winners and, we, and they pr the first winner of the first challenge was very interesting to divide the, the co-processor. And the condition for the challenge was actually that they have to, uh, uh, as a part of the submission, everything needs to be on GitHub in a public way. The design data, the the chats, the uh, the whole structure from A to Z, available for other people and documented for other people to learn from it. So, uh, and if the the designer, you know, is a group like the NYU team, where, where they're actually the winner in this challenge, they're actually the quality of the of the data set. In that case, it's a data. It's basically, it's one data point after the big data set, but it is, you know, a representative of something. Another one, you know, this is from Mexico, I University sent the staff, the, another team, they did something uh, for the second challenge. This is the winner, but they're always three. So for that too, uh, you know, now I, I shifted here. This one specifically was actually this winner of this challenge. Um, and we, we, we manufactured the silicon for them. And one important thing is that they use the generative AI um, in general to develop um, an AI, uh, like a machine, like an accelerator. So for that, we actually did the same and we're doing it. And actually this is gonna be available soon to actually have a platform for you to, to be able to, or for the designer in general, to be able to plug in a custom accelerator. Not only that, uh, it, you know, it looks the same, similar thing, you just, um, you, you plug in your design, 
But not only did we do that, is this also you uh, provide like a working flow that allows you to to go in two different ways. This is one one way though, that's a workflow that takes you from something like an OM and goes into uh, building uh, the piece of the chip that actually plugs in into the the uh, that uh, SOC that I'm uh, and the second one is which are more improved, which is actually is something to be, we're publishing something about it soon, is to actually have a complete, um, you know, different, a higher level of automation and 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 uh, and um, around the, the conversion to the RTL, uh, make it aware with more system level uh, nuances, et cetera. And in all these cases, um, the data is, is important to be able to generate to to um, uh, to to d deliver these LM LLMs in a in a quality way, and actually, again, having them open is the ultimate um, uh, mechanism to make it ubiquitous. So, I'm gonna just close with a call a call to action. You know, so I would say, if you want to try this, this is not intimidating at all. It's actually it should be considered as a software exercise. Uh, it is that's the, how it's designed for. And that's how, because that's how uh, the world should go. Um, you join the channel Generative AI, it has about 750 members uh, just around the Generative AI topic. And these are coming from a semi around the semiconductor space. Obviously, the community for Generative AI is so huge for other topics. Um, the second thing, there is a challenge right now for generating a, a, an AI accelerator. I'm sorry, a, gener uh, a, key, a keyword spotting accelerator. And it is open, and we're going to provide information on how to do it. At least just take a look at it and see it as a potential um, solution for the tiny ML aspect at the edge, if you look at, you know, for the tiny ML community, not, not necessarily the generative AI aspect of this. And then to contribute to the public data set somehow, and I call for, you know, you know companies and including ourselves to, you know, well, how do you, you know, sponsor some of these activities to provide high-quality data set uh, instead of just uh, living with the data sets that are available in, or uh, or the um, um, in on, in the open source domain. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, and appreciate you keeping keep us on time, Albert. Thank you much for your talk. Huge thanks to all of our partners. Um, wouldn't be possible without you. We have AI Zip, Arduino, Arm, Brainchip, Edge Impulse, which is where I work. Embed you are efficient green waves technologies, Gravetti Inc., Hymax, Imagine Mob, Infineon, Inaterra, Nota AI, NXP, PG, Corvo, Qualcomm, Renesas, Schneider Electric, Sensi ML, Sony, Silicon Labs, ST, Synaptics, Sentient, and TDK. These are our strategic partners. We also have executive strategic partners. Qualcomm AI Research, we're advancing AI research to make efficient AI ubiquitous. Sentient, who are accelerating your edge compute, making edge AI a reality. And our platinum strategic partners, Embed UR, Atrios, who deploy vision AI at the edge at scale with Sony. And our gold strategic partners, Arm, building the future of tiny ML. Edge Impulse, the leading development platform for Edge ML. Infineon, driving decarbonization and digitalization together. And Renesas, who are enabling the next generation of AI powered solutions that will revolutionize every industry sector. ST Microelectronics, who provide extensive solutions to make tiny machine learning easy. Synaptics, who are engineering exceptional experiences. And our silver strategic partners, AI Zip, Arduino, Brainchip, Efficient, Greenwaves, Gravetti, Hymax, Imagimob, Inaterra, Nota AI, NXP, PG, Schneider Electric, Sensi ML, Silicon Labs, and TDK. Thank you to all of you. And that's to wrap up our session here. Huge thanks to the audience and all of the presenters. We've had an amazing couple of days of insights and inspiration to go forward and build great things so thank you so much everybody again and um, i hope you enjoyed it <laughs>